Finding Nemo, Night Games, written by Elizabeth Rudnick, illustrated by the Disney Storybook Art Team. Nemo was enjoying the perfect afternoon. He was playing tag with his octopus friend, Pearl. The two friends chased each other from sponge bed to sponge bed. Tag, you're it, Pearl giggled as she tapped Nemo on the back with one of her eight tiny tentacles. Bet you can't catch me. We'll see about that. Nemo said as Pearl jetted away, kicking up a large cloud of sand. Nemo flipped his fins faster and chased Pearl past the edge of the sponge buds. It was just about... He was just about to tag her when he spotted something tall and white up ahead. What is that? he shouted, pointing a fin over Pearl's head. What's what? Pearl asked. Come on, Nemo said. Let's go check it out. Nemo swam toward the... Looming object, it seemed to wave at them in a gentle current. Wait for me, Pearl called out, getting closer. Nemo let out an excited yell. It was a huge seaweed bed. The bed was a giant maze of green and red seaweed. Some spots were almost too dense to swim through, while others formed small pockets of open space. Pearl and Nemo had never seen it before. This looks like the perfect hide-and-seek spot, Nemo said to Pearl. Want to play? Pearl looked around nervously. The sea had started to turn dark. I would love to, Nemo, but I think we should head home. It's getting late and both our dads will be wondering where we are. Looking around, Nemo realized Pearl was right. It was time to go home for the night. When Nemo got back to the sea anemone, his father was waiting. Together they had dinner and Nemo told him about his afternoon with Pearl and the seaweed bed. That sounds like a neat place, Marlin told his son, but now it's time for bed. Aw, come on, Dad, Nemo protested. Pro protested. Can't I just stay up a little bit longer? Marlin shook his head, tried to get some sleep, son. Nemo settled into bed and closed his eyes. He told himself a long bedtime story. He thought about boring things, like math class. He even counted dolphins, but he still wasn't sleepy. Finally, Nemo got up and swam to his father. Dad, I can't fall asleep. I've tried, but I just can't. So I was thinking... Marilyn looked up at his son. Thinking, you say, he replied, trying not to smile. He had a pretty good idea what his son had to had been thinking. What exactly were you thinking, son, he asked. I think you and I should go to the seaweed bed now. That way, you'll know it's safe, and I can go there tomorrow and play with my friends. I promise, when we get back, I'll go right to bed. Please, Nemo begged. Marlin looked at his son's hopeful face. Seeing the seaweed bed for himself did seem like a good idea. All right, he said finally. Let's go take a look of, at this new find of yours. Yes, Nemo shouted, flipping over in excitement. Let's go. As Marilyn and Nemo swam through the reef, Nemo realized he was glad to have his father with him. Everything seemed scarier in the dark. Squinting, Nemo looked for the seaweed bed, but in the dark, it was nearly impossible to see anything. Son, Marlene began, are you sure the bed is, is out this far? Nemo nodded. It is. I know it is. I just wish we could see a little better. Nemo was just about to give up when he saw a light, a light in the distance. The speck drew closer and closer, growing brighter and brighter, until it lit up the water all around Nemo. In the middle of the light was this strange fish Nemo had never seen. The fish had giant lights under his her eyes. Hi, I'm, I'm Nemo, Nemo stampered, amazed. Hi, the other fish said in a friendly sing-song. I'm Lumen. It's nice to meet you, Lumen, Marlin said. I'm Nemo's dad. How come we've never seen you before? Lumen flattered around, causing her little light to waver and flicker. My family and I are nocturnal, she said. We swim and play at night while everyone is sleeping. Dad and I are being nocturnal too, Nemo said. We're looking for the big seaweed bed I found this afternoon. Do you know where it is? You bet I do, Lumen said. That's where I live. Follow me. Lumen led Nemo and Marilyn to the seaweed bed. Do you want to play a game? She asked. Yeah, Nemo shouted. Can we, Dad? Please? Marilyn nodded. 
Just stay out of here in the just stay out here in the open, he said. I'm going to have to a look around. While the kids played, Merlin Merlin explored the seaweed bed to make sure it was safe. Behind him he could hear his sound cunning down from one hundred. Don't peek, Merlin heard Lumen shout as she swam off to find a good hiding place. Marlene pushed the maze of thick green and red and red strands, swimming farther and farther into the seaweed bed. Suddenly he realized how dark and quiet it had become. He could no longer hear Nemo or Lumen's light. Marlene spun around. He had no idea of where he was. All he could see was seaweed. He was lost. Nemo, he shouted. Nemo, where are you? But there was no answer. Flipping his fins, Marlene tried to find his way out. Just when he was he was beginning to think he would be stuck in the seaweed bed forever, Merlin spotted a faint light in the distance. Nemo, he called, swimming toward it. Is that you? Following the light, Merlin made his way through the seaweed. The strands grew farther apart until finally he hit the open water. There, right where he'd left them, were Nemo and Lumen. Merlin let out a sight of relief. Dad, Nemo said excitedly, there you are. We didn't know where you'd gone. Don't you know better than to swim off by yourself in the dark? Merlin smiled. I guess I should have followed my own advice. Nemo gave Merlin a hug. I'm just glad we found you, Dad. Together, the two said goodnight to Lumen as they swam home. Merlin let out a big yawn. Nemo looked at his father. When we get home, I think you should go right to bed, Dad, Nemo said with a teasing look in his eyes. You have had more than enough adventures for one day. The end.